Um, I want to. Okay. Um, I want to thank you, Jake and uh, Yuri, um, for uh, giving me this opportunity to practice presenting. And um, you know, uh, I hope I have something that uh, people will uh, enjoy. So uh, let's see. Share my screen. Wow. Okay. And then, okay. So um, this is a presentation for people who are excited about Python. Um, and I just wanted to have a slide that kind of goes over kind of what the uh, whole thing is, is uh, the developer challenges both from the expert side and the newcomer side, um, and then Python as a possible solution, and then questions that we may come against when we are talking to people who maybe aren't uh, really seeing themselves as a programmer per se. And then really this this is a presentation for people to see and be able to make it their own uh, to communicate our passion to others. Um, let's see here. Oh, oh wait. Uh, okay. So uh, I am someone who is very, very good at math and science. And uh, I have Asperger's, so the social interaction is very difficult for me. Um, and it's something that I've really worked on to get better at. Oh, mm, at doing interactions and being successful at it. And so through my life, I've really just kind of gone through multiple different jobs and different things that have given me a, a wide range of things to learn about. Um, and I'm actually a roommate of someone who uh, creates visual representations for uh, the data that scientists want to uh, have presented. And this presentation is really uh, a br brainchild of that because when I was starting to get interested in Python, uh, he would get so excited that he would regurgitate his level of expertise and it was just way too big for me to handle. And um, so, Part of this is like if I, with all the difficulties that I have in interacting with people, can get through this and possibly give you some resources that you may not have seen before, um, that's, that's my goal, that you would be able to do this and maybe even be able to do it better than I can. So... Um, and, and again, it, it, this is about sharing our passion for programming for Python and um, helping uh, others get into the, uh, um, the thought process that's involved in programming. So uh, the professional challenges that I saw my roommate have is his, his coworkers would not see the bigger picture of what needed to happen and it was causing problems in his work and people would promise things to the scientists and they'd say oh yeah we can get it done in x amount of time and it's like well actually it's a bigger problem than what you may think it is and so i kind of visualized it as uh let's see here Ooh. Uh, so I'm going to do a video on the Holy Grail 
this is a little graphic, so just as a warning. Um, this is what I imagine when he encounters his... Right. Keep me covered. What with? Just keep me covered. Too late. What? There he is. Where? Here. What, behind the rabbit? It is the rabbit. You silly thought. What? It was all worked up. Why is no ordinary rabbit? That's the most foul, cruel, and bad temper rodent you ever set eyes on. No, Kit. I saw my arm I was so scared. Look, that rabbit's got a vicious street a mile wide. It's a killer. It'll <laughs> do you a treat, mate. Oh, yeah. Manky Scott's Kit. I'm warning you. What's he do? Nibble your bum? He's got huge, sharp. He can leap about. Look at the bones. <laughs> Go on, boys, chop his head off. Right, silly little beater. One red or two coming right up. Look! Ah. Jesus Christ! I warned you. I've done it again. I warned you, but did you listen to me? Oh, no, you know, didn't you? Oh, it's just a harmless little bunny, isn't it? Well, it's always the same. I always oh, tell you. Do they listen? You ever wondered what Ooh. actors and oh. actresses do when they have to get in shape really fast for? Okay. So um, that's what I kind of imagine is happening at his work is he's warning people of what's going to happen. And they're like, no, that's not a problem. And it creates a big problem. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about is professional bias. And what I mean by that is um, like each person in whatever profession they are, there tends to be a my profession is the most important profession, at least in my situations that I encounter. Maybe in other cultures it's different, but, um, you know, it's very much uh, my roommate is, is about the STEM fields and how accurate they are and how precise they are, where uh, I really think that other things also have value in developing the soft skills of being able to present and being able to communicate uh, in a way that is not going to overwhelm uh, someone who isn't at the same level as uh, a professional is going to be at. And then every industry has jargon, which is a barrier for people who uh, do not have the, the same level of experience. Um, or if it's just someone who, if you're talking to uh, your clients, they're not necessarily going to know the jargon that uh, is in your uh, industry. And so really I wanted to talk about communication failures where, uh, where it, it comes into newcomer challenges. So uh, the complexity overwhelm that I'm talking about is, uh, I remember when Final Fantasy XII came out and uh, it was kind of a precursor to MMOs and open world uh, games. And I'd never had a game that big or complex. And I was just completely overwhelmed and didn't want to play it for a long time until I finally got used to the, the mechanics of the game and, uh, you know, really was able to um, adapt to it. 
and uh, newcomers also, it's not just a new syntax that they're learning, it's like the difference between learning a Germanic language versus a Romance language or versus, uh, you know, an Asian language that has like pitch is important in uh, some Asian languages. And so it's just a whole new way of thinking. And uh, pre-planning is all about like if you want to work on a Mac or Linux or uh, a mobile device, there's pre-planning that, that needs to happen on certain programming languages that uh, really I don't think is necessary for a newcomer to really uh, dig into. And so uh, it, it can really be something that they've never really exercised, but it's something they can learn and gain. So um, let's see. Uh, so in getting rid of the jargon, there's, uh, let's see, YouTube has a, uh, where is it? Um, oops, Wired. So Wired has uh, 17 different episodes where they explain things um, at five different levels. So they have the expert level, the grad student, the college student, teen, and child. And uh, let's see, they uh, have an explanation. She's a, a college student. She's not a grad student yet. And she has a question about some of the things that could go wrong in machine learning. So I want to play just a minute or so of that. Be the outcome if you were to choose the quote unquote wrong approach. You build a system that could actually be useless. So years ago, I had a client that was a big telecom company, and they had a data scientist who built a deep learning system to predict customer churn. Actually, it was very accurate, but it wasn't useful because nobody knew why the prediction was what it was. So they could say, you know, Sunny, you're likely to quit next month, but they had no idea what to do about it. Mm -hmm. And so I think there are a bunch of failure modes. Would that be an example of like linear regression? Okay. Okay, so um, Python is, is really a very good solution for a lot of the problems uh, that people could encounter in working with other programming languages. So one of the first things is it's free. <laughs> um, not having to pay for a programming language is a very good thing and you don't have to you don't have to be a non uh, profit to use python you don't have to change things around to be a for profit or non profit to be able to use python and um, python is also able to use almost all forms of um, uh, platforms, so you don't have to do the pre-planning that you would with other um, pro programming languages. And so uh, one of the things that I really like about Python is the syntax is one of the simplest syntax of the various programming languages that I've come across. And so it, it makes it um, simple enough for a, a beginning user, but it's powerful enough for someone who's an expert or um, very good at uh, working with uh, programming languages. And it, it has extensions and it can be used with C++ and other languages to really um, make it really usable. Okay, so there, there might be some, some uh, hesitation or um, dis discern um, people who may not really see the value in programming. And it's really not about the programming itself. It's about developing the 
thinking process, whether it's the math or the programming that benefits the person in life and being able to make problem, break problems down into smaller problems and then solve those smaller problems um, so that it's not uh, just this gigantic thing that's a monolith that you don't really know how to, to fix. So uh, let's see. So if, if there's people who really want to get started but are really hesitant to use a um, text programming language, there's actually some um, programming languages that are graphical that can really be a stepping stone. So Scratch Junior uh, uh, worked with uh, PBS to have basically it's just little icons that you press and and each icon is is distinct and is able to uh, be used by someone who doesn't know how to read yet. Scratch was developed by MIT and um, you know for children and uh, there's microcontrollers that have both the graphical and the uh, text so that you can uh, use it like a Lego to put things together, but you can also start to get a leg up on using the text-based things that, um, that are a part of it. And so, okay. So uh, this is my information. Um, and I feel like I just gave a whole bunch of information without much uh, asking for much feedback. Um, if there's any questions, I'm, I'm available to answer. Or if you want to wait till later for that. Hey, so we do have some questions, yes. Uh, sure. First of all, yeah, uh, so can go back. Back. Yeah, sorry. I can go back on, on um, the, the slides if you want. I think this is fine. Uh, so okay. I have, uh, well, we have some generic ones. So you can go for yep. the first one. I just wanted to ask uh, how long do you use Python or, 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 well, develop in Python or whatever you do in Python? Uh, I am a very beginner. And so my, my goal was to help people get people interested in and excited about Python because I think it's a great programming language and I want to get more interested in it. And I've been focusing more on working on my speaking skills because when I first worked on my speaking skills, I had to have notes and read it verbatim, like not look up, not nothing. Like I, I, I was deathly afraid of presenting before um, I really started working on it. So, yeah. I think uh, you've did pretty well. So thanks for the talk again. Uh, I, I have yeah. two more questions. One would be, sure. uh, do you have any fi favorite library in Python? Oh gosh, probably the random library. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very fair. <laughs> And maybe the second would be uh, the time, like the, the different time ones for uh, both the dates and um, just various uh, timer things. Those are the two I would say are my favorite. Cool, fair, thank you. And the other one would be, uh, do you use Python in, uh, for, let's say, generic programming or learning, or would you like to go uh, as you play the machine learning part uh, with something more specific? So I would like to get to a place where I can work on it um, at a professional level. I'm concerned that if I work too much, I might develop a carpal tunnel and so i'm like trying to be uh like i tend to spend hours on something in, instead of like developing a healthy habit of like you know spending an hour a day or be, being more um 
consistent with it. I tend to get really excited and, and spend, you know, five hours or something and then, you know, do it again on, on another day, you know, and, and it's not like what I make money on right now. So, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you have any questions from the public? Another question, but Brian is totally right. I mean, I agree with Brian about how simple it is to learn Python. I'm also a beginner in Python. Disclaimer, I'm, a, I'm an R programming fan or lover. I, I'm, I'm involved in, in R programming language 100%. But uh, I get into Python world five to six months ago, and it's really, really easy. I took my my base no my base knowledge of our programming language. I took it to Python, and I'm progress about about Python. I've been able to create interactive maps with Python with basic knowledge of Python. I mean, I'm kind of a rookie in Python, but Brian just said, "Hey, Python is simple. You can learn it." And I, I will show you, thanks to thanks to Ryan's presentation, I will show you. Uh, Beside the presentation of, on our markdown, what I've been able to do with basic knowledge of Python and create an uh, interactive map using Folium. Folium is a Python library that you can use to create interactive maps. And it's really, really easy. If I can do this with basic knowledge of Python, I can teach it, I can show it to others, and, and build a, a community. Thank you, Ryan, for your presentation. <laughs>